<clears throat> well, hi everybody, this is John Jay. Thanks for joining. Um, today's Thursday, June 17th. And I wanted to discuss part two, I guess I'm calling it, of the short video I did regarding whether or not to say yes or no on your Form 1040. And I'm sorry that I, um, sometimes I get carried away and I forget that there's a history, there's more detail that I should mention. So I did, I didn't talk about that. And uh, I've been talking about that subject since 2017 and sometimes I forget the basic information. So um, pardon me if the, my presentation right now is gonna sound scripted because I actually wrote the words out so that I don't miss anything but I would like to um, have a discussion on it, if that's okay, if you guys find this useful. So I'm going to read what my notes here, which is only a page and a half, it's not a lot. And uh, this, let's call it <clears throat> the rest of the story, okay, as Paul Harvey would say. Um, so before I get into that though, I always forget this, but I wanna mention, I mean, you guys already know this, but this video is gonna be seen by other people, but um, I wanna mention that we have uh, aceofcoins.com, which, is a blog where I put up information, articles. I'm finding lately that I do more videos than uh, written articles. And then uh, privacyfight.io, I know a lot of you are already members. I appreciate that. And um, uh, we have video content. The ultimate um, level is talking about uh, the more advanced subjects, strategies, topics, uh, specifically investing in cryptographic currency and, and things like that. And uh, we are very soon going to have some uh, interviews and content regarding placing large amounts of capital in uh, private equity and real assets and other things like that, other than the stock market, or maybe some of these things can be part of your reallocation plan. So in any case, let me get started with this. This, let's call it part two of the uh, video I, I started on whether or not to answer yes or no on your form 1040. So I'm just going to read it. I hate to do that, but I just don't want to miss anything. So the purpose of this section is to describe the revocable trust relationship between the limited liability company as the account holder at the cryptographic currency exchange and the exchange itself. Now, I know in my operating agreement, I put, I described it as an irrevocable trust. It really doesn't matter how it's described. It has some aspects of each. So I'm, for the purpose of this article, I'm just going to say a revocable trust, okay? The relationship, <clears throat> the relationship that the account holder has with the exchange includes some aspects that are not revocable, uh, but because the beneficial interest can be changed by the beneficiaries, uh, that's the account holder, the uh, trust relationship is revocable. <clears throat> Either the exchange retain, retains ownership of the private keys for each coin, a coin being a cryptographic currency and is thereby the owner of each coin that is exchanged for another coin with another beneficiary, the account holder, another account holder. Or the exchange facilitates exchanges between two different private key owners. And I'm gonna go into some more detail here. The account holders are the beneficiaries who are using dollars to change beneficial interest between coins. They're not changing ownership. The ownership doesn't change, but the beneficial interest change but it's, it's being done under a trust relationship. So the ownership of the private keys is the same for a transaction, or if the ownership is the same for a transaction, then this is not considered a purchase. So the owner of the, of the coin is established by whoever has the private keys. So for purposes of disclosing on Form 1040 in response to the question, did you purchase any coins? I paraphrase that, of course. It's the same explanation as before. Exchanging coins for coins on a crypto exchange is not a purchase. If the ownership of the private keys is different between parties and in exchange between beneficiaries or just owners of coins, like for example, if I use a paper wallet and a paper wallet or a ledger or something like that, then an exchange is considered a purchase for sale. And on form 1040, you would answer yes, if you were, if you were the purchaser. This assumes the account holder or coin owner is normally someone who files a form 1040, not a trust or an LLC, for example, okay? This example would include a situation where you used dollars at Coinbase to buy Bitcoin, then moved your Bitcoin to your Exodus or Trezor wallet, wherein the beneficial interest did not change. So there is no sale. You're still the owner both ways. However, if you exchanged your Bitcoin on Exodus for Litecoin on Exodus, this is considered a purchase 
and it would appear that way on the relative blockchains through Exodus. Also, also, if you exchanged your Bitcoin on Exodus for, for example, my Litecoin on my ledger, that is technically a purchase. <clears throat> but there would be no way to identify the two wallet transfers as being related as if they were an exchange of coins for coins between two different private key holders. Even though this example is a purchase, it would not be discoverable by any means, at least that I, that I could imagine. You got two different blockchains going on, two different blockchains. So <clears throat> most, if not all exchanges, retain ownership of the private keys on both sides of the transaction where two different beneficiaries or account holders are exchanging coins. Therefore, while there is no change in ownership, there is a change in beneficial interest. The change in beneficial interest is in trust and there is no reporting or tax consequence until there is a distribution in dollars currency to the beneficiary. If the beneficiary is a pass through any tax or any possible tax consequence is deferred. If the beneficiary is a person who normally files form 1040 or a tax return, this will create a reportable and likely taxable situation. Remember also that exchanges between coins, even though they may be valued in dollars, are not dollars and that only the realization, I now have the right to spend, for example, of dollars are subject to taxation. And it's important to note that trades between coins are for like or equal value, however they are valued. An exchange of coins using a decentralized wallet, such as a hard wallet or software that you download, would nearly always involve two different owners of private keys and therefore constitute a change in ownership and a change in beneficial interest. Ironically, these transactions are not usually reported, even though they are reportable and do constitute a purchase of cryptographic currency. Okay, one, one more paragraph. And as explained in the first part, buying cryptographic currency, coins as I call them, in any way using dollars is not reportable, such as on form 1099, nor is it taxable, as, and you would answer no on form 1040 since it does not constitute a purchase. The summary of this, there is a revocation, a revocable, there's a, rev, there's a revocable trust relationship between an exchange and the account holder. The reason why there is a trust relationship is because of the manner in which coins are owned by the private keys and the exchange retains the ownership until there is a distribution in dollars of the beneficiary or account holder <clears throat> or to the beneficiary or the account holder. <clears throat> so there, there has to be a distribution in dollars to the account holder who is actually the beneficiary in that situation. Account holders are the beneficiaries who use dollars to periodically change beneficial interest while in trust. That's literally what's happening on the exchanges. A distribution is the exchange of coins for dollars, whether or not the dollars in the account holders exchange account are moved to the account holders bank account. You can remove that the portion of the principal using the equation I explained in the previous explanation. When the, when the beneficiary is distributed dollars, that are subject to taxation. Okay, and uh, this, <clears throat> this is just an English literal description of what I believe is happening. And so far, I haven't had a disagreement from the IRS. And the way I have to ask the IRS for a determination when there's a situation where someone gets a 1099 and it's in, it incorrectly shows the amount of dollars he's received, <clears throat> I use a legal argument, let's call it, to the IRS and the IRS has always agreed and they do so in so, sort of a cryptic way where they just say, take no further action or they don't respond. And then we exclude the 1099 and we've been, never had a problem with the IRS. And it's not the only time we've done that. Over the years, now I've had literally thousands of cases where uh, people had a 1099 from debt collectors, okay? And uh, because of their situation, we can exclude that 1099 that they would get from Citibank or from the debt collector we can ex exclude it on the, t on the 1040. And even though the IRS has the 1099 and it doesn't balance out on the 1040, 
the IRS doesn't make a problem with it because there are a couple of uh, legal issues that they just take care of it. They, they do the accounting on it. So I've never had a problem with that. I did have one client that wanted to go to the extra effort of sending in a disclosure statement along with the 1040, which was fine. He, he did all that and he felt better and it, it received the same results. So to date, we're at 2021 now. So it's been about maybe three years, I'd say. Three years, I've done about 15 requests for determination letters where there's been, uh, been a 1099 issued by Coinbase or Kraken or Gemini. And uh, it was where the 1099 showed a dollar amount where the client did not receive any dollars. And in some cases received only a small portion of those dollars. And I was able to explain that <clears throat> and the IRS agreed. And uh, there was no, that 1099 was not taxable, put it that way. So anyways, I hope uh, that is clears this up. I didn't mean to be cryptic last time. I, I just totally forgot about all the background details about how the exchanges work. So as of today, I don't know if there's any changes. Tell me if I'm wrong on that. But uh, so far, uh, Coinbase and Kraken and all those guys still operate that same way. All right, so if, if you guys wanna discuss this, I hope this is uh, useful. I will uh, call on you and uh, we, can, we can field some questions. All right. Let me look at chat here. All right. But when from 1040, doesn't that raise you? Okay, and I'm going to address that uh, on the note. Okay, so on the, okay, as an, if you're an authorized signatory on an LLC, that never establishes ownership. The only thing that establishes ownership is the articles and what you say. So even if you were named as an owner of an LLC and you did not include that in your 1040, that does, that's not a problem. It's just that if you did that and you would have owed the IRS money, well, that, that could be a problem. But in this case, you're not going to ever owe the IRS money because of the way we set this up. So yeah, you can be the authorized signatory and know that does not create an ownership status uh, with relation to the LLC assets. Hope that helps. And then um, someone's asking me, would you share that note in here? Are you talking about what note? Um, you have to give me a little more information. What note are we talking about? Uh, the request for determination letter? Or is it the information from the last call? I mean, I'm sorry, the last video I did. Oh yeah, okay, now that, what I just read to you, that is on the notes section of my first video. So if you go to Privacy Fight on YouTube, what I just read to you is there. Is that all right? I can put it in here too, if you want. I'll just do that. I'll put the text in there so you guys don't have to look it up. Where can I put it? I suppose I should put it, could I put it in Zoom here? It's gonna be quite a bit of text. Will it let me do that? No, it's not gonna let me do all that. It's too much text. But anyways, yeah, it's on that uh, other video in the notes section. Okay, I'll do that. I'll put the PDF in here. Just, just give me a second. Sometimes I can't do more than one thing at a time, so. All right. Yeah, I know, you I, You don't wanna to listen to the video. It's probably easier to skim and look at the statements. So I'll do that. If some of y'all have your hand raised, oh, I see Ken over here. Just give me just a second here. <laughs> um, I wanna make sure you guys get this. Today's gonna be, uh, let's call it May, uh, June 17th. Okay, so. Okay. And let's call it part two notes. And then do that. Now let's see if I can do that. All right. I 
it takes me a second to uh, maneuver through all these folders. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. Part two notes PDF. It should appear here in just a second. I think you guys should be able to see that. All right. And uh, Ken, what can I help you with? Hi, John. Hey. I had a question about opening a bank account. Uh, I remember you telling me I need an operating uh, agreement uh, to open the bank account. And uh, you mentioned something about a a short version, shortened version of it, a one-page version. Right. Uh, do you have an example of that? Yeah, I do. Um, it's if you have an LLC from me, it's from it, I have it in there. It's one pager, and it just says at the top operating agreement, and then it's got a couple of things. What I did is I took the articles that you're going to give the bank anyways, and I I reproduced them into the operating agreement, so it says the same thing as the articles do. So you can make it look like that. And and really all the bank wants to see is a piece of paper that says operating agreement at the top. Okay. So that's as so that, as it that's is, yeah. fairly simple. Sure. Yeah. I can email it to you as well, but I just didn't want to flood the room with this. But yeah, that's all I did really. Just so the bank won't ask me anymore. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. And then there is Clemens. What, what's on your mind? Hi, uh, John. I have a question to regarding the LLC when you um, do a uh, like a bank loan, a finance loan on the assets that you mentioned. When, for instance, you buy a house, right, and you form an LLC and have a uh, a finance loan on that house. So you mm -hmm. you as a person, you pay off that loan to that LLC. So the tax, you know. Uh, is defer right my question is that if that the case uh, 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 would that LLC receive the quote-unquote income from the payment if, if so would that LLC need to file a tax return because it now it is an entity earning income it's mm -hmm. no longer just a holding entity like before yeah, that's a good question. Um, if the LLC is not filing a return, it will not have to file a return if it's the lender. So if I'm if I'm buying some real estate and I use an LLC to become the mortgage lender on it, and I'm just taking cash that I have control of and I'm putting it for the purchase, of it, I get the title, and then I just I want to keep the title and I'm using an LLC as the lender. This is what you're describing, right? Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. The LLC is just like your LLC you're using for cryptos. As long as it doesn't file a return, it can earn interest and dividends and all that, and it will not need to file a return. And you can do it that way, documenting the payments. But remember, it's not necessary to document payments on a loan with a banking system. I know it's typical, 99.9% .9 of everyone does it that way, but you can document payments on a debt through a, a spreadsheet if you want, just some record, okay, that you're making payments on a regular basis. Even if it's a spreadsheet that says on March 17th and every 17th of every month, I'm making $200 payment on this thing. And you have that in your records. If the IRS ever wanted to ask you about it, you could say, well, I have a record of the payments here. And they'll say, well, why is it in your bank statement? Say, well, because I deal a lot of cash. I don't want to use the bank or whatever, you, however you did, you know? So yeah, as long as there's a record of the payments on a loan, you'll be fine. If that's if that's a record, then there would be a record of a receiving LLC, and uh, and that uh, receiving LLC would be under your control. And then, then the IRS can ask, how come that LLC never file tax because it received the income? Yeah, they would. If, if they would, yeah, if they would. And but again, that there's no, it didn't file because it didn't file. There, so, it, no the, the, so the LLC can earn interest, dividend, sure. uh, any kind of investment as long as it doesn't file. That's right. Tax and it's okay. That is correct. If you file a return on it, though, you got to keep filing, and then be sure to account for money that you spend on yourself. That's what the IRS really wants to know on the 1040s. And also, like think something like, don't use LLC money to buy a car and then put the car in your name and think that that's okay. Right. Yeah. So just do if you follow the rules that I, I'm telling I'm telling you, you're going to be fine. I know it sounds weird or different, but 
I've seen it in practice for almost 30 years. And I don't know that you're going to find some law that says you do it that way. But what I've concluded is that you choose the tax treatment. So, th so the question is, did the IRS, is it owed any money? Well, it is if I have taxable income. And that is not taxable income to you. But would that be a taxable income to the LLC? It would if, let's say it is. The answer is yes on that. But there's no obligation until the LLC claims it. The LLC has to claim it under certain tax, whatever, tax treatment. The LLC has to claim it as its own on a 1065 or a, a partnership or something like that, or somebody else has to claim that money. For example, you could claim it on your Schedule C. Sure. But as long as you're not spending it, you're not needing to claim it, right? It's, if you're not using it for yourself, you're not need, needing to claim it. It's kind of like it, it's kind of like if you if you had your stock brokerage would not do this for you, but if you liquidated your stock and and bought gold with it, most of them will not never do that because the IRS wouldn't let them really. Um, you're you're able to do that because of your tax treatment. And what is your tax treatment? It's what you've chosen. Okay, okay. It's similar to like what you said. You know, person who just first find a job uh, at a twenty and never fired. 10, yeah, 40, that, would never that's have another, tax. yeah, that was another uh, confirmation that of my understanding of how the system works. I have clients that, um, this, this, a uh, couple of clients where they, they had like 17 organizations. Okay. They had offshore companies and all this, and I don't know what they were trying to do, but when I first got, the, when I first started talking to them, the first, my first call with them is I asked, what are you doing with this Panama company? What are you doing with this, this offshore Belize thing and all the IBCs and all this? And they actually explained uh, the, the husband was taking the, his employment income, which he had, a, he had a high income, and he was moving that money, he was wiring it over to the foreign companies. And I, then when I asked him what the purpose was, he couldn't answer me. He, there was no purpose, except he thought he was going to avoid taxation of it. But it was wage income. He'd already paid the tax on it, you know. But what was interesting is they had um, maybe four or five LLCs, and they, those companies were, were owning property real estate, some of them had bank accounts, they had EINs, and then some of them filed returns and some did not. And the IRS did not care. They could care less about any of the LLCs, even the ones that filed returns. All they cared about was the, the, two, the couple uh, not paying an amount of tax. That was it. It had nothing to do with the, the LLCs over here. They just were looking at exactly what I tell everybody. They're looking at your personal use of the money. There's a couple other issues, but that's, you know, that was just another example of, of how they do it. It's just like when I, when I get a business out of a till take, a till take, you know, is when they just levy all your income. So I'll just set up another company and, and reroute all the cash flow. And the IRS does not care about that company ever. You know, I've, I've had clients call me for years down the road and I, they've never had a problem with the organization I would set up. And uh, their accounting stayed the same because they had it like, for example, a chiropractor's office, he would have an S corp. I don't change anything there. He keeps filing tax returns for an S corp. But then when I set up a new company and make it a payment processor and route all his money there and then pay only his expenses and keep, keep it running that way, it's still no problem. So just follow those basic rules. So let's say if I, I form an LLC and use that LLC to make investment like say uh, syndication in real estate mm -hmm. and the syndication received the uh, distribution and the income at the end of the year, they send you a K-1 to the LLC. Mm -hmm. And that income can just stay in the LLC without filing tax as long as you don't claim it on my 1040 and that right. income stay in there. Right. And that K -1 that LLC not... never file tax. Correct. The LLC, uh, the, the K-1 does not create a filing obligation. <clears throat> This is, the, this is the one fact that, that's getting everyone to wonder, what the heck, how do you do that? Because they understand, they believe the filing obligation comes when the IRS sees money somewhere. And the only time the IRS sees money is when they get a K-1 or a 1099. No, that doesn't, that doesn't create a filing obligation. What creates a filing obligation is filing. I see. So the, the IRS can see your K-1, but they won't see yeah. your tax? They, they can see it, but there's no accounting for it. There's no need to reconcile that against something else until you file a return. So yeah, if as long as you don't take the money out for yourself or use it and try to you know hide it or something or pay your credit card bill, I don't recommend doing that either. Mm -hmm. Then you're not going to be in a situation where the IRS would some someday say you owe the money and, and didn't report it or that you underreported it. And so far, I've not had that situation since the mid 90s.
And I've, I've, I've worked a lot of different cases. I've never seen that situation. Got it. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Good questions. Um, I'm going to go to the chat here. Uh, is there a preference to open LLC bank account online or in person? I mean, with today's uh, fake pandemic, you guys want to go in there and, and deal with that first. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's better now than ever that you can do it over the internet. And um, it, it wasn't until around around 2010 or nine that one of my clients said he had opened accounts at Bank of America and Chase over the internet. Back then, that was like 12 years ago. And since then, I've been having my clients do it because a lot of times I open the accounts where the client doesn't live. It's not convenient to go travel to that state, but it's convenient to set it up that way. And so we've been opening accounts online for about 12 years now. And so for, for convenience, I would just recommend doing it that way. You guys can do it however you want. And um, should I use my real name to put, or put my LLC company in a name opening a mailbox in Wyoming? Okay, it, when you open a mailbox, you're gonna do a postal form 1583 and they're gonna want your ID. It's almost like opening a bank account. So yeah, use your legal name you, that, that's on your documents. You really can't avoid that, but here's what's really cool. In box 14, it asks you for a trade name. I think it's box 14. And then the trade name or fictitious name, you can use it as a fictitious name. So like, for example, let's say I'm helping a woman, a single woman, and I need to change her location for some reason. I will set up a mailbox and she'll give her ID to the mailbox place. Now, only some people can get that information. You have to be the FBI or something like that. You can't just, not, not just anyone can get that information, okay? So she's really protected in that sense. So she'll open the mailbox, but in the trade name, she'll write Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Jameson. Mr. and Mrs. Jameson. So it looks like a married couple's box. And then all her mail will be addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Jameson or Mr. Jameson. Okay, that is a use for it. So as far as using a, 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 an alias on an LLC, you can do that also. You can, you can use an alias on your mailbox. Just know that they're going to still need your ID to be able to open the box. They won't do it unless you have documents that you created with the alias on there. Okay, that can be done. If you guys want to go to that level, you can do that. No problem. Okay. Um, you can also use a fictitious name on an LLC when it doesn't need a bank account, when it's going to be used in a way that your ID doesn't need to be used to verify your, your name. So just keep that in mind. Every situation is different. All right, we got a few questions here. So let's go to, hopefully I didn't miss anybody. Clemens, was that good? Are, are you good? No more questions? Okay, I'm, I'm going to have you lower your hand there. And then I'm going to go to, uh, was okay, David. Go, go right ahead, David. Okay, uh, John. So I, I, this is kind of maybe off um, the topic. I did a. Let me ask it this way: for the LLC trust, um, immunity trust fund, mm -hmm. um, there's a free consultation that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay. So yeah, I, I already, I paid for one as well so okay. after the fact um so i submitted my paperwork with you for the llc back in mm -hmm. april 11th and then i was i said well maybe i need to set up a consultation so i paid for that okay um is so how does that work then should, should i cancel that or is there a way to cancel that you can cancel it um i can have the processor canceled if you want you want me to reverse it i can reverse it if you want me to yeah because i guess if sure. i get a free one um, yeah, then I why, don't need... why spend money when you don't have to? <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm with you on that one. And th I'm going to make then, a note here. Yeah. Okay. Is it in this I, name here that appears here? Yes, it is. I, I okay. did do a, a DM. I did DM you on, I did a direct message for your, yeah. um, uh, on the uh, Telegram. So I can also put it in there as well, just as a reminder. But yes. But yeah, and then how, uh, w what is the time frame you think this, uh, the LLC trust fund? Cause you haven't took my money. You should take my money for that. I want to do it when you, I, yeah, I, I want to do it when you're approved and I'm sorry, I'm slow. And I did okay. bring on some more people to help me. So they are no catching problem. up. So you're cool. probably right there in the queue. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm sorry about that. I appreciate no, your patience. No, no. So, no but problem. yeah, I will tell them to, uh, I'll tell them to reverse the, the schedule. And also what date did you have it booked for? I think we're in August. Oh, in August. Okay. Well, certainly. Um, do I have your email or, or direct message on telegram or something? uh i'll put it i'll post everything in telegram for you then in, in um well i'll post it right here now so you have yeah, it. i was just gonna say call me directly 
let's get let's have a conversation. I don't want you to wait till August. And I'm not, and I, I don't I don't hope I don't upset people because I'm not trying to do that to everybody. I just sure. I, I'm doing the best I can to answer people's questions, and I know you have to wait sometimes. But if no I problem. can, I will try to talk with you as early as possible. Okay. So if so, you can, yeah, if you so download my order form, you'll see my phone number there. Okay. It should be, I, or if not, I'll I'll check email. But uh, do, do, and it also comes with that one email that kicked back right away when we submit. Uh, yeah. Okay. So a, it's that one too. Okay. It is that. Yes. I will. I will then. So Thank you. Certainly. Yeah, definitely. I want to make sure that that's why I'm pretty soon. I'm not going to be able to do this. Okay. I'm not going to be able to uh, talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. Hopefully my video series, and I'm going to add one more mm. video to the free consultation, but I, what I'm going to end up doing is um, conferences like this where I can do group calls. I, yeah. I just have to do it that way because I cannot get things done. And I love to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, everybody. And it is necessary for the most part, but I can't after a short time here. So towards the end of the year, sure. it's going to change a little bit. So thank you very much, John. All right. Okay, David. Appreciate your understanding. I'll get that done. No problem. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. So on a, on an exchange with a PMA, the, 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 uh, the bank wants to see articles of association. There are no articles unless you want to write them. You don't need to show the bank anything because the PMAs I have in mind when I write these are the PMA is a name of a PMA of which you're already a member, like your family or a, or a club or a fan club or something. It doesn't have to be written down, okay, to be a PMA. But you can't have that conversation with a bank employee. He's going to think he's going to think you're nuts. So what I've done is in my abstract documents, I, I did also like I did for the operating agreement. I created articles of association for the PMA, which is just a document to so the bank will be happy. Okay, this is not the real articles and if you want me to help you develop your articles i can also do that but uh you'll, you'll see in my abstract documents okay you can also explain to the bank i mean you can you can tell them whatever you feel comfortable with but if you use my documents um that should be handled all right yeah every, anything i give you in the abstract section the eight pages or whatever they are that is intended to give to the bank and i know the bank asks you for to fill out more forms. But if you look at the forms, you'll see it's asking for the same information I have on the documents. So they should take those forms. And a lot of times they insist on you filling out their documents. Just make sure you're not changing your arrangements and your property rights when you're filling out bank documents. Um, and then someone's asking me, when I'm filling out the LLC form on Ace of Coins, okay, uh, do I leave the, the blank? Yeah, if you want me to, I can, I can pick, a, I can choose a name for you. Just let me know. That's why I have a notes section. I can do all that. Anything you want me to do, whatever you prefer, put on that form. Anything else I can do for you. And of course, we always send you the documents to review anyway. So don't, we're not going to just register something unless we get your approval. That's why I don't, I really don't like billing accounts until you guys like everything I've set up. Um, and yeah, so hopefully that answers those. Let me see if we have any, any here, any hands up. Do I see any hands up? Okay. Well, I have a I question. I didn't say that too fast. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm the one with the first question about like if I'm the authorized signatory, and yeah. uh, like if I if I do cash out on cryptos and then um, and then, so I'm supposed to not file tax with the LLC and I'm supposed to file like a 1040 Schedule C. Is that correct? If you need to claim some of the income for whatever purpose, but the most of the income would probably you want it to stay in the LLC and then not claim it, as long as you're not using it for personal benefits so what if i want to take money out of dallas they take the money out and then report it as your income so you don't need a 1099 for that i don't even mention like the it's a like schedule um file through it's like uh, through the llc it doesn't matter where it comes from the fact is you have additional money in addition to your other gross income and you would just claim it as miscellaneous income uh, I don't know that you need to put it on Schedule C, but you want to include it with your gross income, however you want to call it. And it doesn't need a 1099. You don't have to say it came from an LLC. It has nothing to do with cryptos. Uh, it's just additional income. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And I think Wayne. How are you doing? Some? Um, yeah, right. simple question. When I opened my bank account, the LLC, the only thing they were interested in was the name of the LLC, the state filed, and the EIN. They never asked me for anything else. I never That's gave them anything should. else. That's the correct okay. way, yes. Okay, so everything's cool with that. What bank was that, by the way? Chase. Isn't that interesting? All right, yeah. so if you guys ask me what bank I prefer, and I've never really committed to one, I'm going to have to say Chase. If they're going to do it like that, because that's what they're supposed to be doing. 
They should not ask you about the PMA. They should not ask you for an organizational chart. They should not ask you for a utilities bill. All right. Yeah, it was, it was super easy. And I was kind of wondering, am I doing something wrong? Because this is super, super easy. Hey, maybe we've broken through a barrier. Maybe they've seen so many of these. They're just like, okay, these aren't money launderers. <laughs> yeah, I think they kind, of, they kind of knew what was going on too, I'm sure. Just tell them you're in the Bitcoin cult. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, last question. Also, when I uh, filed it with the state, the LLC, I never gave any um, operating agreement or anything. Do I need to send no. something now? No, never. Um, the most important okay. thing that you want to give a third party, which, which is a legitimate request, is a, a copy of the articles of association that you filed with the state or that you published in the newspaper. Most of you guys didn't do it that way. But um, the, sometimes they want a certified copy. Now, lately, they're, they're accepting PDF versions, or these are copies of the certified copy of the articles. So that's what they want. Anything else is really not necessary. I'm not even sure if they even sent the articles, so maybe I should look at that. Well, they probably looked it up. They're okay. not supposed to do it that way, by the way, but I'm happy if they'll do it that way because it's all public record, so they don't need you okay. to go to the expense of getting that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. All right. Yeah, and, and you're asking me about the consulting. Certainly, I mean, I, I really, I do like to talk to people because I want to make sure I'm not just selling paper, um, but I have enough videos out there, okay, that now when I'm finding this whole year, I'm finding that you guys watch my videos and you you call me and you already know a lot of the things that we can talk about. So we're already, we're already now to the more important, interesting uh, questions and subjects. So I would just suggest if you look at my free consultation videos and the third one I'm going to put up there, that should answer most of your questions and of course, it's always a good idea to talk to me first, if you can, while you can, okay? Um, but uh, we'll definitely gonna, we're gonna definitely talk. So um, if you have a structure, you know, you have me set up something for you or do a strategy, I definitely wanna talk to you at some point and it's as early as you need it as possible, okay? All right. Wayne, did you wanna ask anything else? All right, okay. All right, um, so I appreciate the questions. I hope that clears up things. And I um, appreciate everyone's patience. I think we're catching up. We've uh, we got some new help, and they're doing a great job. So uh, thanks for uh, thanks for uh, supporting me there. All right, guys. And let's see. Okay, one more. Looks like regarding the 1040 question, can you discuss collateralized loans and liquidations? Is that a sale? Okay. Um, lending your coin or borrowing money against your coin as collateral is not a sale. No, that's a loan transaction. You're a lender or a borrower, no sale there. Okay, all right, you guys, appreciate that. You guys have a nice weekend too.